Yes, I'm leaving. Leaving. I'm long gone. Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm Zeke, and welcome to the Dream Green Show. Today mark week eight of me tracking AMD. Can you guys believe it's already been two months? Go ahead and leave a thumbs up if you guys have been tracking my AMD progress. I'm gonna track AMD over the next 52 weeks, a full year, to see if tracking their price, news, their competitor news, looking at their earnings report, and also doing market analysis on the graph, I'm gonna see if tracking that one company, just focusing and narrowing in on that one company will have any benefits of me day trading, swing trading, or playing options on AMD over the course of this year. And this week, I actually made a little bit of money. So you guys stay tuned until the end of the video where I do my market analysis. But before we dive into my Robinhood account, make sure that you guys hit that thumbs up button. It helps out this channel more than you even can imagine. Just take one second out of your day just to hit that thumbs up button. It helps me out tremendously. But enough talking, let's go ahead and pull up my Robinhood app. All right, guys, here we are inside my Robinhood portfolio. I'm currently sitting at $24,063.90. On the week, not much happened. I'm up half a percent, $118.86. So that's how my portfolio played out over the week. Let's go ahead and pull up AMD right quick. Okay, here we are on AMD. AMD is currently sitting at $81.25. It went down 4.5% last week, so I'm glad I did not buy at the top. I told you guys in my last video I was going to wait for it to pull back a little bit, and it's looking like it's continuing to pull back. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do this week at the end of this video while I'm doing my market analysis. So guys, don't miss out on that on my market analysis for my plays that are coming up this week. If we scroll down a little bit, I still have 47 shares of AMD worth $3,818 and 75 cents my average cost of amd is 33 dollars and 43 cents and my total return is two thousand two hundred and forty seven dollars and sixty eight cents up 143 percent so that is amazing that i got in on amd so early right now amd is still underneath 100 billion dollar market cap they're at 95 billion dollars 95.45 billion dollars to be exact so they're not a hundred billion dollar company consistently but they're still on the cusp they're still right there so amd is no longer a small fish in a large ocean they're more like a big fish in a very large lake a very large lake okay they're still at underneath 100 billion dollars in that market evaluation so scrolling down a little bit more over on Robinhood, there's 36 analysis saying that 42 percent buy 50 percent hold and eight percent sell sell so if you already hold amd 50 percent of them is saying hold on to it and 42 percent of them are saying go ahead and pick up some more shares of amd and eight percent saying sell it all <laughs> that's why it's eight percent i believe amd will continue to rise up to be a hundred billion dollar company again in the long term and stay above 100 billion dollars so let's scroll down on my gains for the week i did a amd put credit spread at a price point of 77 dollars on august 14th and i ended up getting eight dollars credited to my account for amd that's going to bring my grand total over the last eight weeks to 39 dollars and 62 cents so that is my grand total for the last eight weeks. I am just happy that I'm not in the negatives. I am in the positives with AMD. Um, I'm still new to this. And if you guys have been watching my journey over the last eight weeks, you will see that I have been having success over the course of the last eight weeks by playing it smart and super safe. Before we dive into the news, let's take a look at Intel. Now, Intel is down over the last month 16%. Okay, guys, it's at $48.89. They're a direct competitor with AMD. And the reason that AMD is doing so successful, not it's not just because they are a great company and they're doing good things. It's also they have grown so much over the last month is because Intel has been underperforming over the last month due to their delay in their seven nanometer cpus if we take a look intel is still 
the king on the block. Intel been around for a very long time, even after a 14% dip over the last month. They're still a $207 billion company. Their market cap is $207.93 billion. So they're, they're no small, they're not small. Intel is gonna bounce back pretty soon, if not this year, then next year to give AMD a run for that money. Well, AMD is giving Intel a run for their money, but Intel is still king when it comes to CPUs. But right now they have been underperforming, which allows AMD to get a competitive edge on them right now. And with that being said, Intel is at $48, while AMD is above $80. While Intel is a $207 billion market evaluation, either AMD is overvalued or Intel is undervalued. So keep that in mind. Don't just bash Intel. They are the king. They are the remaining king on the block. Um, don't just say, don't just go all in on AMD because they're doing very well right now and thinking Intel is gonna fail as a company, as a business, they're, they're not. So let's go ahead and dive into the news that I've seen this week so we could get more in depth on AMD. All right guys, here we are on the news on the week. I found four different articles. Okay, this one is saying that Intel is gonna come back soon. Intel are, is developing their next gen graphics cards. It's called the XE. And they're planning on giving NVIDIA and AMD Big Navy a run for their money. They're going to call it the XE Graphics. It's going to have ray tracing capability. And so they're going to be competing against NVIDIA, which I don't think they're going to match NVIDIA. And they're also going to be competing against AMD that has been making great graphics cards at a great price for the last couple of years. The addition that is for the gamers, which is the most important, that's the one that really pushes the company um, to sell GPUs, is gonna be paired with um, Intel Next Gen Tiger Lake CPU chips. And it is gonna be called the XE HGP for the gaming um, GPUs. It's expected to have a speedy DDR6 with, whoa, Okay, GDDD, GDDR6, which is pretty fast, and to be scalable, a scalable GPU, meaning it could be used for multiple tiers of graphics card. All right, so Intel is looking to take some of the market share of the graphics card um, area when it comes to gaming. Also, the graphics cards is gonna be for data centers and for supercomputers. So they're trying to look to get into data centers using this GPU. So they're trying to not get left behind and develop a very good GPU to compete in the market space due to that. But what's most important to me is the gaming, since I do game, it's the XEHPG for the gaming computer. So although it has not been released yet or reviewed, it is expected to come out in 2021. So that's when you can expect to see Intel starting to bounce back early next year, mid next year, when they release their new CPUs and graphics card. Now keep in mind, their new CPUs are still gonna be 10 nanometers. It's not gonna be seven nanometers, but they do got a trick up their sleeve to try to compete with AMD seven nanometer chips. Okay, so here goes some more good news for AMD. AMD can make even more billions by scrolling down. They, they have hit 10% server market shares ahead of schedule. So AMD has hit double digits in their earnings from just being in the server market by putting their CPUs and GPUs on the servers that uh, different companies can use like Google. They have accumulated from over 20% worth of their earnings from their last earnings report, just from being in the server. All right, so like right here, the company's generated over 20% of its second quarter revenue from data centers produced as sales of the Epic server processes more than double from the prior year period. So they accumulated over 20% worth of the company profits from being in data centers and servers using their um, Epic uh, server processor. So um, AMD is killing it. They're ahead of schedule when it comes to their market share in the data center area and they're looking to expand even more. They reached their goal a lot faster than I thought they would. That means that they have a lot more room to grow because they're going to produce a lot more of these Epic um, server processors to get more than 10% in the data center industry. So that is very good for AMD. If they make 20% from there and they grow even more, I could see them being a, a dominant force in the data center industry. All right, so here goes some big news for Intel. Intel is coming up out with their Tiger Lakes 11 Gen CPUs on September 2nd. They're expecting to roll out September 2nd. Now, single-threaded performance, they're looking to outperform 
AMD, but when it comes to multi-core performance, AMD still remain king. In fact, if you guys want to get a laptop at a very uh, reasonable price that has multi-cores, AMD is still the way to go. AMD has an eight core, it's powerhouse uh, if you want a three pound laptop or so. But when it comes to single core performance, Intel is the way to go. Even though it's still a 10 nanometer chip, AMD is working on a seven nanometer chip. So when it comes to laptops, I think AMD is gonna dominate that area. But when it comes to gaming, gaming alone, Intel is going to outperform AMD when it comes to gaming. They always have. And I, I believe they always will, okay? Unless AMD got some tricks up their sleeves. If we take a look at this other article, Intel has added a super fan. Uh, it claims that that super fan, which will be used on the Tiger Lake processors and Intel's first discrete GPUs, will deliver 17% to 18% better transistor performance than what Intel's first 10 nanometer transistor delivered. So even though they're still working on a 10 nanometer chip, they're expecting with the super fan technology to increase by 17 to 18% performance. So they still can remain the, um, the gaming kings when it comes to which CPU to buy for gaming, even though they're working on a 10 nanometer chip. Now that we have looked at the news, let's go ahead and do our market analysis so that we can see what we're gonna do this week on AMD. All right, here we are on the market analysis, ticker symbol AMD. We're on the four hour, 180 day chart. That means every bar that you see on here is worth four hours of the trading day of AMD. I drew this line out last week. I thought that it would bounce around the last support line. It did and it continued to rise up. But as you guys can see here, this was a high and then this was a high and got rejected. So it's making lower highs. Now we have to wait this week to see if it makes a lower low. If it's making lower highs and lower low, I could see AMD coming all the way back to a support line around the 180 day simple moving average, which is the green line right here. So it could come back down here unless it makes higher lows right here and continue to rise up. Now I do see $87 being its resistance line. So I believe that AMD will play somewhere in this channel over the next coming days, maybe the next coming weeks. I can see it trading sideways until it catches up to the 180 day simple moving average. If we look at the RSI, it's not overbought or oversold. So the market, the buyers and the sellers are pretty much saying that it's at an even right now. And the MACD is not crossing. It's going completely sideways right now. That's why I think the market is going to go sideways next week. And if we look at the one hour, 20 day chart, it is still riding the 180 day simple moving average. And if we draw an arrow right there on the side of the 180 day simple moving average, let's say this green line right here, if we draw an arrow right there, put an arrow right on the end of that line, it's pointing up, right? If we put an arrow right on the end of this line right here, all right, it's pointing sideways. It's, it's pointing sideways right there. So AMD could trade in between this uh, resistance and the support line for the next couple of weeks. If it does come back down, this is the last support line. And I think it will use it on the four hour, 180 day chart. I believe it will use this line. So let's draw this out as its support line and this line as the resistance line and trade in that channel for the next coming days unless some big news come out. Let's Intel um rolls out september 7 with some big news with their new tiger lake cpus and gaining their market shares back then i could see amd bouncing back to this 180 day simple moving average if it's the if it does that i'm going to buy a lot more shares of amd all right so with that being said i think amd is going to trade in between those two channels that i drew and on my market analysis so i might do another put credit spread on amd not thinking that it will fall any further below 75 dollars again for this week so that might be my play on the week amd was down 4.5 percent last week so it might be a good buying opportunity if it does recover but other than that if you guys stuck this far to the end of this video go ahead and leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos if you guys like the AMD series, go down below in the comment section and let me know what are your plays on the week on AMD. But other than that, I'm Zeke, bringing you the Dream Green Show, and I'm out. Peace.